What's going on guys? My name is Morgan and welcome to Season 1, Episode 8 of MDK Production School. Okay, so at this point, you guys have set up your MIDI controllers, you know how to work inside of the piano roll, you know a bunch of cool little tools and things that you can use. Now it's time to start having some fun and doing some actual recording. Today we're going to take a look at how to record MIDI notation, which is this stuff right here, the notes that we've been placing in the piano roll. Recording MIDI data is really easy to do, and there's not much that we have to do to set up. The only thing that you have to ensure is that when you right click on this record button right here, score has a check mark beside it. If it doesn't, then you won't actually be able to record any notation. Next, there's a couple of options that you might want to take a look at. First and foremost being the metronome. If you don't know what a metronome is, I'll show you. We'll just make a blank pattern and let's just press play. A metronome is just a click, or in this case, a hi-hat that just plays along at the same BPM as your song and helps you stay in time when you record stuff. If we right click the metronome button, we can choose different sounds for our metronome to use. We had it set to hi-hat, but let's choose beep. For now, I'm just gonna leave it on hi-hat. You can also look at this button right here with the numbers three, two, one beside it. This is your countdown before recording button. And when it's enabled, it gives you one bar before your recording starts. So you'll hear four ticks. And then on the next beat would be when your actual recording starts. It's a really nice way to just give yourself a bit of a heads up and it makes your recording a bit less of a hassle. You can also click this button right below it, which is wait for input to start playing. When this is enabled and you hit record, nothing will actually happen until you press a key on your keyboard. As soon as you hit a key, it begins recording. So I've made a few small tweaks to this project since the last time you guys have heard it. Let's go into the playlist and I'll show you exactly what I did. The changes aren't too major. I took the piano chords that we wrote a couple lessons ago and I stuck them in. And then I finished up the bass line that I was working on. I also moved the bass drop over slightly because it sounded really bad to have it right here. I'll switch to song mode and press play so you guys can hear how it sounds. So it's pretty neat, but it's definitely missing something. Right now, it's kind of just chilled out and it's really laid back and it doesn't have any sort of melody over top of it. So that's the exact problem that we're gonna fix. I'm gonna play some sort of melody over top of it and hope that it actually sounds somewhat decent. All right, let's go back to the step sequencer and let's make sure we're on a new pattern. We'll just name this lead. The reason you wanna make a new pattern is because whenever you record MIDI notation, it records it on the pattern that you have selected. I'm gonna use the hard lead, which is the preset from Harmer that we brought in a few lessons ago. This is what it sounds like in case you don't remember. Once you have your new pattern and your options up here are set how you like, the only thing left to do is to hit record and start jamming. All right, so kind of a sloppy version of Jelly Castle, but still sounds kind of cool. Here's the melody again. Now, I don't know if you guys noticed, but when I was playing it back, you could hear that it wasn't really on beat in a few places. In some parts I played a bit sloppy and my timing was off, and it just didn't sound that great in a couple spots. Fortunately, this is electronic music, so that's pretty easy to fix. Let's go ahead and double click this pattern, and we'll take a look at the piano roll for it. Now you can already see, like if you look right here, this note is supposed to be lined up with this line and it's quite a ways off. This one is supposed to be here, quite a ways off. This one's supposed to be here, quite a ways off. It looks like I was playing a lot of the notes too early, so that's what was throwing off the timing. Now you can spend a lot of time adjusting each of these notes and putting them at the right bar and all of that, or you could just hit Alt Q on your keyboard, and this brings up our quantizer. So as you can see, the quantizer is already taking effect, and it's locking each of my notes to this grid. Right now it's set to step, which is why these red lines are one step apart. You can open this, and if you go up one folder, 
you'll be in the main quantization folder. And inside this folder are all sorts of different grid settings that you can use with your quantizer. Let's go ahead and just close that for now. And I think we're gonna stick with step. Let's press spacebar because you can't actually click play from this menu. And let's take a listen to how it sounds right now. So it sounded pretty good. I'd probably wanna make a few manual adjustments to a couple of these notes. But when it got right here, these notes became really, really short and they just sounded kind of weird. It didn't fit the song at all. This is where you need to start messing around with your quantize options, but keep in mind that you won't get every single note 100% the way you want it, so sometimes you just hit accept and go do the changes manually yourself. This can be a bit of a bother, but just remember it's always worth it to do a good job so that your song sounds as good as it possibly can. If you click this drop down arrow, you have a few more options that you can choose from. These will drastically alter the way the quantizer works, so make sure you give them a shot. If you choose leave duration, it'll make the notes the exact same length that they were when you recorded them. It won't change the end time, it'll just change when the note starts and lock it to the grid. If you choose quantize duration, it'll change all of your steps to be one step in length because that's the step that we have for our groove template. If you change this groove template to something that was a different size, then all of your note values would change as well if you're using quantize duration. I think for this one, I'm gonna use quantize end time and I'll hit accept, and then I'll just go in and make these changes manually, because there's not too many to do. All right, so if we skip ahead, this is what our finished melody looks like now. I think there were only about five or six notes that I needed to actually adjust, but I just cut out that part to make this tutorial a bit shorter. Let's take a listen to how this sounds now. So there you go, it sounds a lot cleaner and makes it sound like I recorded it perfectly, which I definitely did of course. Keep in mind that locking your notes completely to the grid might not be the best for all styles of music. A lot of jazz music or certain styles of hip hop have a lot more of a loose feel to them, so you wouldn't want to lock your notes super tight to the grid. A good way to make your quantizing sound a little less robotic is to play with this sensitivity knob right here. As you can see, mine was all the way to the right which makes the quantize as harsh as possible. But as you turn it further left, it makes the quantize a lot softer and not as strict. There's one last thing that I wanna show you guys that can make your life a lot easier. So let's go ahead and make another new pattern and go up to your top where it says tools, then go to dump score log to selected pattern. The reason you wanna do this on a new pattern is because it will overwrite every single thing that you have in your step sequencer. So in a sense, FL Studio is always recording in the background. By using that menu option, you're telling it to dump all of that recording that it's doing into your current pattern. I think it records for about five minutes before it starts over. So if you've been playing piano for about 10 minutes and you wanna go back to that first melody that you did, it probably won't be in here anymore. However, if it's something that you've recently played, you can absolutely grab it from here. I wouldn't recommend relying on this entirely, but it definitely saves you from those moments where you play something really cool and then just instantly forget how to play it. That might sound kind of weird, but it definitely happens way more often than you'd expect. So this is a good thing to keep in mind. All right, so that pretty much sums up recording MIDI in FL Studio. Hopefully now you guys can have a lot more fun and experiment a lot with your tracks. Don't forget to go down to Harmer and change the preset to something else if you want to start experimenting with your song. Hey guys, thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. Feel free to leave a comment below and let me know what you thought. Don't forget, if you're interested in trying FL Studio for yourself, there's a link in the description to save 10% off all ImageLine software. When you're ready, click that next button, and I'll see you in the next lesson.